During the 1950s and 60s, the Central Australian Desert was the scene of high-tech weapons testing. Missiles and rockets were fired across the continent, along a line extending from Woomera to as far as the Indian Ocean. A road network was constructed to access the rocket range, a project led by the legendary Army surveyor Len Bedell and his Gun Barrel Road Construction Party. In July 2022, Ron Moon led a group of overlanders across many of Len Bedell's rocket roads. This video covers much of the Gary Highway, an important south to north link that Len built in early 1963 and named after his son. Despite its name, the Gary Highway is nothing more than a pair of wheel ruts that traverse the Gibson Desert, a remote and hostile area of the Western Australian outback. We planned two days for this leg, starting at the Geraldton Historic Society Bore on the Gun Barrel Highway and ending on the Talawana Track after turning west at Windy Corner, about two thirds of the way up the Gary Highway. After waking with the birds, we were soon rattling eastward on the Gun Barrel Highway to Everard Junction. Southern entry onto the Gary Highway could be easily missed as it's marked by a Bedell plaque on the lid of a 44 gallon drum that is tucked back in the roadside scrub. Once on the Gary, track conditions change to be just wheel ruts through the endless Spinifex plains. Sections of the track were very corrugated and the grevilleas and acacias hemmed the route. Occasional stony rises broke the monotony and provided a great outlook across the plains. One of our convoys got a, uh, another tyre let go, so we've had to stop on the track in an area with a lot of spin effects. And because we don't want to have a vehicle fire, you can see that we stop 
so that the middle of the vehicle is over the track so the hot exhaust and other components aren't um, sitting on spinifex clumps and hopefully less chance of a fire and while we're here you can see that in these areas particularly where the track is quite corrugated it's all ironstone pebbles which makes it uh, pretty heavy going actually heavier than sand Termite mounds are another hazard in places, sometimes right on edge of the track to catch a wandering driver. We took advantage of a small pebbly clearing to stop for lunch and to clear away the ever-present spin effects from under the vehicle. Worst of the spin effects and mulga overgrowth was on the flood out areas which increased as we got further north. Soon after pushing through one particularly thick section of Spinifex, we came across a recent victim, a late model Prado completely burnt out. By mid-afternoon we reached our night's camp on the clay flats of Lake Cohen. Unfortunately the lake was not holding much water, so we missed out on the bird life parade that we hoped for. The lake must have been a great attraction for the Aboriginal people, with plenty of evidence that they camped here, including stone chippings and scars where bark coolamans had been cut from the trees. The following morning we were once again ploughing through waste high spin effects and scrub.
Well, this morning we're on the northern end of the Gary Highway and uh, we'll probably stop for Smoko at Windy Corner and then head west. The top end of the track is uh, pretty tight with overgrowth. So I've got the mirrors tucked in because uh, they're getting a bit smashed about with all of the sticks and shrubs. I just uh, pop them out when things get a bit clearer to keep an eye on the trailer. But for the most part, it's uh, sort of mulga and grevilleas and all sorts of desert shrubs are really crowding in around the track. I guess because I've had a couple of good seasons up here with uh, enough rain to promote all this undergrowth. Another beautiful day. It's already up around 20 odd degrees at uh, about nine o'clock. Our plan today is to head across to Midway Well, but uh, see how we go, because uh, we're expecting this next track heading westward to uh, need a bit of clearing particularly if uh, this sort of shrub growth is the same over there. Tracks are like this, I'm thankful I've got the paint protection film on the car and on the trailer because they uh, really get torn up with all of these sticks and leaves and twigs scratching down the side. Also, of course, keeping an eye underneath the car because there's a lot of spin effects growth in between the wheel tracks and uh, we don't want to end up like those burnt out wrecks that I've shown you along the way. There's always uh, a few clumps of spin effects and some twigs get up around the, the bash plates and suspension. So we uh, stop every now and then and clear that away. Otherwise, I'll give you an update as we get further down the track. Catch you later. Eventually we reach Windy Corner and turn left off the Gowrie Highway, westward onto the Talawana track. Bedell had to wait here for his road construction team and he was pinned down by a desert windstorm for several days, hence name of this road junction. The Windy Corner Road Junction is marked by another Bedell plaque, plus the more recent addition of some empty oil drums. A month later on our homeward trip, we pass through Gary Junction, the northern terminus of the Gary Highway. We didn't get to traverse the northern end of the track which is apparently similar except for an area where it crosses some large sand dunes. From here, our expedition continues across the Talawana track to reach the Canning Stock Route. Jump on board for the adventure. <laughs> 